Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Sangel with the Chabad House of Delmar, together with my co-host Mark Ronich of Statewide News Service and jbiztechvalley.com. Well, Rabbi, you know how we like to bring the arts into the Jewish View? A lot of... Uh, so we're sophisticated people. Well, you know, the people, who, uh, the, the people who are interested in the arts and have always supported the arts big have been in, from the Jewish community. Yeah, for sure. So one of the gems in this area is the Troy Savings Bank Music Hall in Troy. And um, we have the executive director here, John Elbaum. John, welcome so, to the Jewish View. Welcome to Thank the Jewish you, View. Thank you, Rabbi Mark. Very nice to be here. It's Thanks for to, inviting me. It's great to see you here. And how long have you been the executive director? I've been here now three and a half years. I, yeah. I started, I was the new guy, but now I'm, I'm a, an old vet in, in the uh, You're ensconced in into yes. the area. You know, I came here about 25 years ago. One of the first things, and constantly I hear, Troy Music Hall has the, you know, because people see Troy, it's a little city, you know, we're in the Capital District, has the best acoustics practically in the entire world. Mm -hmm. People have always told me that, and I'm, I'm not an expert. What it's acoustically that? sound. What you say on one side, you can hear clearly on the other side? Is you that... can literally hear a pin drop on the stage from the upper balcony. And it, we've tried this, and it's true. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's quite amazing. It's actually more famous outside of the region. People in New York City know about it. People in, in Germany know about it. People on the West Coast know about it, and you know we've been a recording location for for chamber music and for orchestral music for many many years. We had a recording studio that was headquartered here, and we're still used for that. And people come from over the oh, overseas. Yes. Hey, I want to go to Troy. Mm -hmm. I mean, people aficionados, you know, people who know music. They're Absolutely, real experts. It's a world gem. It really is world class. And it is. So, what, what was the origination? What, was that building the Troy Savings Bank building, <laughs> is, or did they give enough money to create this, and then that's why it's named after? It, it's a very unique story. It was built in 1875 by the Troy Savings Bank as a bank and a concert hall. The concert hall resides on top of the bank. So it's a very unusual situation, much different from Carnegie Hall or other halls around the country. But it was built as a concert hall, as a gift to the people of Troy during Tr Troy's really prosperous times. And uh, it came to be world renowned. The, the acoustics really didn't get famous until after the organ was put in place, which was about 15 years after the hall was finished. And that changed the acoustical properties for whatever reasons. For the better. For the better, kind of a happy accident. And it's been remarkable. And, and since that time, you know, it's, the word has spread. So Troy Savings Bank is still on the Still on the first level? Or the well, it, it was the bank. Troy Savings Bank was acquired by First Niagara oh, some years ago. Okay. And so why not do something in terms of naming it for, like, Carnegie Hall? Mm -hmm. You know, the Dale Carnegie, I guess, was the, you <laughs> right. know. So why not do something in terms of naming rights, or does it have to Wouldn't be... Like the baseball stadiums? Right. I'm just saying, yeah. kind of thing they give, like, the right. like stadium, the, you know. The Times Union Center, is, right. you know, was the... Well, it's actually still owned by the Troy Savings Bank foundation, uh -huh. music, the Music Hall Foundation. So uh, they spend a great deal of time and money uh, keeping the hall up to date. Okay, and, I didn't know useful. there was a foundation. There is a foundation. Okay. It was largely funded by the proceeds from the sale of the bank to First Niagara. So they have this, uh, they have this endowment. The, and, what yes. kind of music, though, uh, you know, like, is it classic to me when you see a beautiful concert hall? I just think of classic music, but is that exclusive? It is not exclusive. We really try very hard to offer a really broad range of music. I mean, we're famous for classical music, but we had the Albany Symphony, which performs there, uh, yeah, we several had, concerts We here. had David Allen Miller on the program oh, here, yes, and David, he mentioned yes. that. Yes, yeah. so. and they love it. I mean, David's very always talking about the acoustics, and they love to play there and record there as well. Um, but we present, we just had Arlo Guthrie, Judy Collins, um, we do some comedy, we've had uh, Paula Poundstone, and, and we have Lily Tomlin coming up. So really a, a, quite a diverse range of shows because we're really trying to attract, you know, the whole breadth of the community. Well, the rock bands wouldn't be part of that, like all those that loud. I'm just thinking that it would might destroy the acoustics. Yeah. Well, it, no, that's a very good point. It really, really doesn't work. It doesn't work. There are certain things that just don't make sense. Um, However commercially viable they may be, they just don't fit in with, with what we're about. So. Are there acts that you approach that you wish would play and that don't come to the Troy Savings Bank Music Hall? Well, it, there's always a bit of negotiation in terms of 
the physical space, what kind of, uh, you know, their requirements in terms of the money. Um, but there are certain acts that, you know, we'd love to see maybe, but it just doesn't make sense. But personally, are there acts that you personally would want to see that you're salivating to get that, you know, <laughs> well, um, in your heart of hearts? Because you're, you, you, you th this is in your blood, this is in your bones. You know, yeah, I mean, there, there are a few. Um, you know, I, I've certainly, uh, I'd love to see like a Dave Matthews, Matthews acoustic set in there or something like that. Um, you know, things that are just a little bit different. Um, okay. Well, know, that the, would fill up the place. Yeah, sure. we'd sell a couple <laughs> tickets. I think. Well, yeah. You said the Albany Symphony York. Is there a Troy Symphony, or is just no. you have to bring in Albany? Uh, Albany is. I mean, there's such a great orchestra. It would be. We don't need another <laughs> orchestra in Troy. But we do. Also, we're home to the Troy Chromatics Concert Series, where they bring in world-class orchestras. We have the Mariinsky Orchestra coming in uh, in in January, uh, and. Uh, so well, how's the attendance there? Because I think it's just actually, yeah, um, I have to blow my own horn because I so was French speak. horn. Yeah, I mm -hmm. was French horn. So I know I do appreciate good music, but what the trouble is, is just that, you know, the younger generation, you know, you're going to, like you say, you go to a rock concert, you're going to go to Beethoven. Right. You know, what are they going to choose? And I, I personally think it's a shame because that's real music. I, I mean, we won't get into <laughs> the other kind of music. I mean, that's beautiful, yeah. incredible music. And Tell a young person. So, do you fill up, or you have enough dates? It de it depends. I mean, it. Some of them don't sell out. Certainly. Um, what What is the capacity? Even? It's uh, almost twelve hundred. It's a pretty big yeah. hall. And you have a balcony. We do. Yes. So, how many seats are in the balcony, and how many? Are... There's about eight hundred on the floor, yeah. and then about three hundred on the first balcony, and then we have an upper balcony. It's and you really doesn't make a difference where you sit, really, with the acoustics. As far as the acoustics, no. Um, how, how do you, I mean, I hate to say it like this, but how do you compare to Proctor's, which also is one of those grand right. uh, theaters? Well, it's, it's very, very different. Um, it, we're a little bit smaller in terms of the number of seats, but Proctor's was built, uh, and especially since the, the uh, expansion that they did to the back of the house, uh, as a theater, we were built as a concert hall, so very okay. different characteristics in terms of the backstage support. Um, we don't have rigging over the stage so we can fly in props and scenery, that sort of thing. We don't have curtains. Our stage is totally exposed. So theatrical stuff just doesn't work in our, in our hall. Um, but we trade that for, for marvelous mm -hmm. music. You know, how, how many music. performances a year do you estimate that you put on? Uh, we present about uh, 30 or so public concerts, but then we also do a, a series of free concerts. Uh, and then we have um, groups like the Albany Symphony and the Chromatics and Empire State Youth Orchestra. So in total, we're, we're busy about 70 to 80 dates a year. So do it's quite, wish, quite busy. Do you wish that it would be double that? Because there are 365 days in the year. Well, there aren't 365 days in our year because the hall is not air conditioned. <laughs> so oh, Tell us about yes, that. Yes. Um, it, it was never added. Um, Partly to preserve the acoustics, yeah, right. it would, you know, that I don't think, especially at that time when, when you know, might have been possible, it would have been very uh, uh, risky mm -hmm. to to do a big project like that, which could potentially damage the acoustics. Right, so, and once you damage it, you can't bring it right, back. Yeah, right, yeah, it's done. And it's like done. you said, this was a, an sort of like an error or something, a misfortune, you know, right. something that changed when you put the organ in that. Turned into something good, right? So yeah. we don't want to we right. don't want to mess with that. Um, so what does that take away? About two three months in a year. Yeah, I mean we stop we stop in mid May and we start up again at the end of September. Well, at that's the end a lot of yeah. time. Now yeah. recently I went to the Victorian Stroll mm -hmm. and I stopped by the music hall. Good. And you put on some performances during the Victorian yeah. Stroll. Can you ex tell sure. us what you did? Then? That's been so successful. And we've kind of been expanding that over the over the last few years. Um, we are now up to uh, three different uh, programs. We have the uh, Sage Singers from right. Sage College, and we also have the Troy Children's Chorus. And then this year we added a, uh, an organist who uh, it was just wonderful. We have a beautiful organ. It was partially restored, and it, but it's not played very often. And I must say, people responded so well to hearing that organ because Talk about a you know a rock concert experience when that organ plays it, you can feel it uh -huh. down in your bones it's <laughs> it's amazing so so do you have um, uh, a chorale 
or was there, did I see that? You did. Okay. Uh, we're very excited. We just developed a new collaboration with Albany Pro Musica, and they will be our chorus in residence beginning in 15, 16 season. So they'll produce their entire series of concerts at our hall. They're very excited, again, because of the acoustics, and it kind of gives them a home. They, they perform at a number of venues around town, and I think they'll continue to do that to some extent. But a group, uh, they're so, uh, such a beautiful uh, choral group, mm -hmm. and they do such great work. Um, and they've got new leadership. They have mm -hmm. a new director, Jose Daniel. Flores Caraballo is their, <laughs> is their new director. He's a wonderful, and very talented don't, man. Aren't they tied in with WAMC in some way, or used to be? Or? Uh, you know, I'm not sure of that. Okay. I know uh, David Creeks Janauer had many relationships within the community, but now, you know, they're... But, uh, uh -huh. the, the recordings, I mean, you always see the... I don't know if they're still doing that. I mean, the pianos. You know, I'm just mm -hmm. saying on the... Re I say records. shows my age well, over here. But in any case, but w I would say there'll be a prime place. Do they have major recordings there at Troy? We do. We're actually working with uh, the Chiara Quartet right at the moment. Um, and they've been doing a series. Uh, they're trying to record the Bartok Concertos. And uh, this has been going on for about a year now. They're coming back in March. They, they absolutely love the hall, but we've worked with a number of other groups, and, and uh, that's a big part of what we do. Is it appropriate to say Troy Music Hall as opposed to Troy Savings Bank Music Hall? Well, the, the official name is the Troy Savings Bank right. Music Hall. But your e what you hear around town often is just shortened to Troy Music Hall. And your email, it's at troymusichall.org. So. It is. Uh, just... I mean, we want to make it easy for people to reach I us, realize. Basically. So, and yeah. the foundation probably had to approve that, maybe? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I yeah. mean, all well, the red tape. Yes. Was, we we have a very good relationship with, with the foundation. It's been a good partnership. And they have really gone the extra mile to ensure that we have the best uh, infrastructure. So do you have to do aggressive fundraising like Palace and Proctors and oh, all yeah. those? Yes, I, I was mean, going to ask just also, Mark. I mean, just saying. We're on the same page here. <laughs> <laughs> with money over well. You know, I know money is money if yeah. it makes things go along. I mean, are you, you know, like that, it's probably in the hole after. What's your budget like? Yeah. Uh, our budget is just under a million. Um, we do have an active fundraising effort. We are about 60 to 70 percent earned income, and the rest is contributed through memberships, sponsorships, donations. You mean earned income, like ticket sales? Ticket sales, okay. ad sales, that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, we do an annual gala. You'd think that there were, for, you know, you're 100, 100, pushing 150 years old, maybe like foundations, just like universities have old money mm -hmm. that have been put in. We Doesn't are not really quite so fortunate in that regard. Uh, you know, it's very difficult to do a capital campaign or an endowment campaign. I think in this environment, we would certainly love to build an endowment, but um, right now we're focusing on operating uh, operating budgets. So, uh, when was the hall built? 1875. 1875. So, yeah, we're, and our organization is actually only 35 years old. We're a, the nonprofit that was formed to really take management responsibilities, booking responsibilities on for the hall because it was not used as heavily as... as uh, the can repairs, you, can you, I would think the repairs would be a tremendous amount of... I mean, something old like that and to keep it up to pristine shape, and you don't want like that. Exactly, and that's, that's where the Charitable Foundation uh, steps in. in. Yes. You know, when you talk about uh, you know, the bookings and mm -hmm. all these other aspects behind the scenes that maybe right. people don't necessarily know about, which we like to bring out sure. and let people know more about what goes on behind the scenes and all the hard work that goes on. It just doesn't appear out of nowhere. Right. So, uh, you know, the Proctors and the Rep, mm -hmm. capital Rep is now right. the Rep, yep. um, they have a, a cooperative arrangement. Mm -hmm. Is there any way that you might consider a cooperative arrangement with Proctors or, you know, where you could also uh, dovetail off of the bookings and maybe become more efficient? Well, we f see this relationship with Albany Pro Musica as perhaps a way to gain some organizational efficiencies in terms of the back office side of things. Yeah. Um, I think there, there's a great potential for that. Haven't really talked to, to Proctors about that. I mean, certainly there's a big initiative regionally mm -hmm. to uh, towards consolidation and, and finding these efficiencies. At the same time, we have to fulfill our own mission. I mean, of course, and so does the rep. Right. I mean, so they all have to fulfill their own mission, right. and I think that that relationship has really worked out well. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering, because I want to say a smaller venues, you know, mm -hmm. really do need to 
band together. <laughs> right. You know. But you know, you say that, but you know, again, as a newcomer to Capital District, Mark also, I mean, for many years, but compared to the, you know, they always make fun of Albany, small, Albany, but for the Capital District, and it really isn't that big of a hub, I mean, it's nothing compared to New York City, of course, but there's tremendous amount of of venues that a person could um, of the arts, you mean. yeah, yeah the right, arts. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Compared to our size, it has to I'm totally. Oh yeah, way. no, that's why I keep you bringing know? the folks on from the different arts venues because right. I want people to know that we are a cultural uh, wealth of culture here. Absolutely. I mean, it's, yeah. it's truly incredible, and you're quite right. I mean, based on the size of the market, we probably have more seats per capita in in mm -hmm. first class um, halls and, right. and 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 theaters. Um, which makes it very competitive, and and so there there are reasons to work together. I think for many years, we, we each geographic area saw themselves as somewhat independent and and separate from uh, the region as a whole, and that's why it, it perhaps evolved that way. So Albany had their own art scenes, mm -hmm. connected. He had their own art scenes, Saratoga, Troy. The trouble in New York City. I'm just thinking right offhand. You know, you'd probably get a lot of New York City people, but then I say, when are they going to come? The summer, and then you say, but the summer you're not there. I don't know if people are going to run up to the arts in the middle of January, February. You know, people in New York City, oh, Albany, when I go down there, <laughs> right. it snows, it's so cold. Yeah. You know, it's not your winter, unless you like going skiing, but that's not what you're offering. Uh, we, do, we do have, uh, you know, a few, few regular patrons and uh, members who do come up from the New York metro area. But, you know, really our, our focus is in is the, the capital district in a radius of about 40 to 50 miles. We do draw fairly well from from uh, Western Mass mm -hmm. and Western Vermont. You know, and the Glimmerglass Opera is another one that's yeah. a world-class organization. They, people say, oh, Cooperstown, oh, it's so far, it's an hour. Right. It's not a big deal, you know. It's, yeah. uh, so maybe I'll get the folks from Glimmerglass on the show <laughs> and talk to them. But, you know, we have this, th this wealth of talent around here and it's just it's just amazing you know we're I always say this about the Jewish community people think that we're a vast wasteland of Jewish life and culture in this area and we're not and it's and people here think so and we're not that's why I built the website jbiztechvalley.com so that I could show everything that we have uh, in this area and it's just well, you're right. It's you know, not only just being Jewish people want to have culture that's right. also that's right they just don't want to they moved to they can move yeah. to Israel, even though the Israeli Philharmonic also. Is well, we've had them at SPAC, the Israel yeah. Philharmonic, before yeah. Marsha White. So I asked her to bring them back, and mm. we'll see if they come back again. You know, it's I'm not, just saying you want yeah. it's a whole community. Everyone it's looks at Russia. Jewish, you, know. you know, they say let's bring the Russians over. Well, you know, the Israelis have a lot of talent. Too. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so we'll see what happens if Marsha takes that on. Takes, uh, you know. <laughs> I'll be watching that. <laughs> What's your, um, you know what? I was going to ask you about the uh, the about the fundraising. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it is it satur is the area saturated, or are there just enough people coming and going where you could still reel reel them in? And what about the they talk about a renaissance of the city of Troy? Mm -hmm. Is that helping you in that you're seeing new businesses that maybe might be contributing and and might be helping and new people? You know, uh, you got hotel, you got sure. hotels, and you have. Um, Apartment, new apartments yeah. being well, I built. I just even think that so. the attendance, people used to think Troy or rundown city, and now it's. Yeah, but you, you look know, in hey, your own, but with fundraising, there. you look in your own backyard first, mm -hmm. really? and then you go I'm out. I'm talking and, about attendance. You know. so, all right. right. But I'm thinking about even more people attending these affairs. They don't feel like, oh, Troy, I don't want to go there. You know, well, no, they would go there, f they would go there for a, a great yeah. event, like a concert in a great concert hall. But you don't necessarily have the fundraising. You know, you got to worry about the fundraising. Right. Well, I mean, it's it's kind of two sides of the same coin. But um, you know, certainly the the funding community is fairly small. You know, relative to the number of, of venues in in this area. So we're all kind of knocking on the same doors. I think it's there. It's growing. But I, I think we're trying to educate some of these new entrepreneurial uh, uh, folks who are coming into the market, part of the the whole tech scene. Uh, because I'm not sure that they have the same understanding of community engagement and community support that some of the older, mm -hmm. more established uh, businesses have, that tradition of supporting the arts, of supporting social services, that sort of thing. So I think that's an education piece that we have to do. We have to figure out ways to engage with them uh, on a programming level, on a personal level, to get them excited about the work that we're doing and what we're providing in terms of the quality of life in Troy, which is the other side of the coin. 
I mean, Troy is really a hopping place mm -hmm. right now. I mean, they talked the new Brooklyn. I, I don't know if it's that, but <laughs> it's, there's a lot going on. I mean, even from the time I came three or so years ago, I mean, you there were vacant buildings all over the place, and, and now it's hard to find an apartment or a vacant storefront. I mean, it's... It's very competitive in terms of the real estate. There's well, a new restaurant opening every couple of weeks, it seems like, and it's the, a great the, thing. The mayor mo won't like me saying this, but when it comes to murder, it may be the new Brooklyn uh, or crime. Well, you, you know, know <laughs> crime makes the headlines, you know? but, but uh, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, pleasant. You know, but it is. No, downtown. no, I was, yeah. like I said, for the yeah. Victorian stroll, I yeah. wasn't in fear of my life. You know, it was right. good. You know, it was nice. And we're working with the city to make it more walkable, more livable. And yeah. the city's very committed and understands the issues, of course. And they're serious issues that range far beyond just the, you know, crime. I mean, we've got a serious social economic problem that, that as a society that I think we have to deal with. And what about you? Do you sit on other community boards? Do you, do you reach out? Do you get involved in other community activity? Sure. I mean, I'm very involved with, with uh, the, the Rensselaer Chamber and the Albany Chamber of Commerce. Um, we're actually forming a, a new Troy Cultural Alliance to kind of bring all of Troy's cultural organizations together to, to work to market Troy as a, as, a, as a cultural destination and to leverage resources, as mm -hmm. we were talking about before. And so I do, I try and get out there as much as possible and get involved in, in different activities. Are you on boards? You're on the boards? Or? I'm actually not serving on any boards right now. Okay. Maybe someone will give you a jingle and maybe get you involved in their own. I, I would love helps, to. Because if you're involved, that helps you. Yeah. Because if they see, oh, right, he's giving his time, he's giving his energy here, you know, now we all have to back the Troy musical. I mean, you can't be insular. No, no, absolutely. I, I agree. I've, I've, since I got here day one, I mean, I've tried to get, get out into the community. I think that is probably my biggest priority as a director yeah. is to be out so there. So tell me, uh, where, what is your background? Where did you come from? How did you get here? It's been Briefly. a long and, <laughs> uh, well, I, I grew up in the Midwest. I grew up in uh, Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I went to, to undergraduate college in Iowa and then um, lived in Chicago for a while, but uh, lived, spent most of my career in Denver, actually, uh, at their large performing arts center there, which is a wonderful, wonderful center, um, enormous. And, it's a mile uh, high. It is. It's a mile <laughs> high and a mile wide. And Denver, of course, has experienced exponential growth in the right. last few years. I mean, it's just, just amazing. But, uh, and then I had some opportunities to take uh, more senior leadership roles in, in Iowa and then also outside of Minneapolis. So uh, to grow my career you know, professionally, I, right. I took, accepted those. And then and this you opportunity. Came, you came here from Minneapolis? I did, yeah. Boy, this is summer for you, isn't it? Right. I mean, this is this is great. <laughs> right. I, I was, I'm not even wearing a coat today. I know. Mean. There's no uh, nothing colder than Minneapolis. Oh, yeah. It's, now, uh, did you have? Did you see the Mary Tyler Moore statue or the thing with Minneapolis? Well, where she throws her hat. And, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean you got to have something to give sure. the city uh, monicum. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Well, Minneapolis has, of course, a very rich art scene. It's just there's so much going on, and right. it's it's a big. Yeah. How does it compare? The, if you had to compare it to one of the cities in the capital district, what's the equivalent size? Is it more Albany or Saratoga? Or? Uh, well, in size, it's it's it far outstrips the whole region put together. I oh, mean, really? I, yes, okay. I think it's like two million, two and a half million uh, is the size of the city. So, well, it, uh, so Albany we're about, County has a million right. in the county. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know you've got the St. Paul side, and then the, the Minneapolis right. side. And St. Paul's the capital. Right. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. That's <laughs> a and you have a little competition going on there. So. So but I actually, I that's, I that's good to keep government away from the arts. You know, <laughs> so keep it separated by the river. <laughs> well, we would like we would like a uh, support from the government. That's right. But get, we, keep we that in mind. <laughs> yes, we don't want. Are to there be, any endowments? I mean, I don't know how it works. The endowments for the arts. You always hear about that. Is there any grants that come from the government? Or yeah, well, we, we, are, we receive funding from the New York State Council on the Arts. Uh, in the past, we've also uh, gotten funding from uh, the Mid-Atlantic Arts Foundation and the National Endowment for the Arts. So mm -hmm. those, those opportunities are out there. How much from the state, approximately? Um, is it like 7,500, or is it more like... It more? has been. A, we're, we've just gotten a, a larger commitment for the next few years, so we're pleased about that. Mm -hmm. In the 20,000 range. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sure. Uh, so. Given the fact that you've been around the country, mm -hmm. uh, do you know of other maybe uh, 
ores that, or uh, you know that, where you can tap into and and mine for that gold <laughs> that's out there and get some more money in here? Or? Um, I, I think there are. You have to start at home. I mean, charity right. begins at home. So, we we our our support is here. Our our uh, followers are here. Our friends are here. These are the people that really need to support the hall if they want it to be around. Are there uh, aspects of the Troy Savings Bank Music Hall that we did not cover that you would like to talk about and highlight? And well, I think that the, one of the keys is that I, you know, you you mentioned that you actually haven't been there, and I, I hear that so frequently among people who have been here 10, 20, 30 years, even their whole lives, and you know that's always a little. <laughs> Source of frustration for me, but because I'm going to bring him because I was there, and I'm going to bring him. <laughs> All right, yeah. it is this Long world class. Friday, that's right. <laughs> it's yeah. a world class treasure right here. You know, 15 minutes from anywhere in the capital region, and I think it's a little underappreciated. So, uh, it's it's a great venue. It's historic. It has so much character. I mean, the seats are original, which is good and bad because you know they're. Not as comfortable, perhaps, as the seats you'll sit in at the movie complex, but um, you know, it, it also gives you an experience that's unlike any other. Right, and that's great. That's, yes. there's a charm to this. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And and you know, there used to be eateries, a lot more eateries. There was Daisy Baker's across the street, right. but they closed down, I believe. Well, they, they had the they had, had a, a fire, a fire and a flood. Yeah, from the from the fire system. So that actually that building has been purchased, and I understand they're actively seeking a, a restaurant mm -hmm. tenant. But so. people can have a dinner and a, and a concert. I mean, there's a there, At, the, there are so many new eateries. Um, there's of course the Bacchus across the street. There's the confectionery, which is generating a, a huge buzz. That's just a few doors down. Do from you us. put together packages for you know, like to go, like they do in New York City? They mm -hmm. have these packages. If you go to this type of restaurant, then you can uh, certainly uh, you know be out in time to go to the concert. Right. We are trying to partner with with the with the local restaurants. I think. Um, a lot of them aren't used to that sort of relationship, yeah. but I think some of these newer restaurants coming in are more interested in being entrepreneurial and, and creating kind of new promotions, and, and they are being receptive to, to working with well, us. Well, we have a new kosher restaurant in Albany, Tara, really? and uh, maybe you can do something uh, with them. And... I'd be delighted. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's... there was someone in Troy, again, you see that. You know, Enigma, I don't know if it's true, like you say, people are, like I was saying, Troy is crime ridden and they don't want to go. You know, there's some little barrier there. Also, oh, you're so far away, Troy. I remember a person, Troy, they always used to come to my classes at Albany. He says, I timed it. <laughs> you know, and it's like you can go where my city is, Delmar to Albany in 12 minutes and this is 17 minutes. You know, people think, you know, it's like a barrier between Albany and Schenectady. But, you, but I got it so far. It's no, but you know what minutes. it is? It's okay. that when you come over through the over the bridge or through the tunnel for mm -hmm. Russell Sage, you don't know where to go mm -hmm. after that. You don't know whether to make a right turn or left turn. Something as simple as signage I agree. would yes. be huge, mm -hmm. make a huge difference. Yep. And they don't have enough signage, like you really just have to know your way. And, right. and that trepidation is what keeps people away, I think, more than anything else. Yeah, once you're used to it, like but, you say, once you see it and say, hey, this isn't bad, you know, then you get used to it. Other people just put it out of their minds. You know, but I really you know, think Troy there needs to be away. a better, like, communication between the driver and the motorist and the and the venue. I, I, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, we're working with the city to make that happen as the Troy Cultural Alliance that because we all recognize we have that problem. At the same time, you have the Troy Farmers Market, which is among the most popular in the region, and, and people manage to find that. So that's, that's good. And anything that you know, helps people get more comfort with coming well, down. So, so just to, you know, let people know, if you come across 787, you get off exit, because you want to go under the Russell Sage Bridge. Yeah, well, yeah, right? you can do that. And uh, then you, you can also take the Green Island Bridge. Okay, but you want, but if you go on second, you go on second, you're on second, right? right? So you make a left on second? Yeah. And right off, right No, you, you'll have to go up to, to uh, fourth. To fourth and, and then, then make a left. Yeah. But if you come over the Green Island Bridge, you can make a right. Make a second. right and just come right over past okay. the dinosaur barbecue there. Okay, so that's the best way. Yeah, that's, I think, the easiest for folks. Easiest are, way. And yeah. Okay, so the Green Island Bridge, make a right, and you're right there. Down the street. Okay. You'll find us. So just wanted to make sure that people yeah. knew and maybe uh, 
hopefully we could do whatever we can to boost attendance and to more appreciation of the building and the acoustics. Well, we appreciate that. Uh, thank you very much for being on the Jewish View, and um, I'll have Mark's going to have to bring me there, yes. give me an escort. But you know, I just yeah. think that we can be, uh, <laughs> we can really uh, for the whole capital district and probably even New York City that. Uh, to see something very special in the Troy Music Hall and look forward to being there. Much success Great. to you. Thank you so much.